We're eating, drinking, and shopping around Disney World. But this time, there's a winner. Hey, ma'am fam, we are here at Disney Springs to play a brand new game. We are going to eat, drink, and shop around Disney Springs, but what we get is chosen by a randomizer. And before we can explain the rules and get started, we gotta figure out who's going first. Yeah. All right, I'm on Google's coin flip. Heads or tails? Heads I win, tails you lose? Yep. Tails, wait. You lose. Wait. <laughs> Tails. Tails. Nice. Okay, here's how it works. Each round, we are gonna be given three descriptors for what we're looking for. Each descriptor is worth a point, which means you can get up to three points an item. First round is food. What am I looking for? We've got a bunch of descriptors in the randomizer and what you have is something that is salty. Blue. Oh no. And crunchy. I hate stuff that dyes my face. <laughs> I love that it's blue. Salty, crunchy, and blue. I have an idea. The problem is, I don't know if this idea is back yet. You see, the final rule of this game is that each round, we can only look in three locations and we can't backtrack. So like if I find something salty and crunchy, do I want to just bag the two points at the first location? Or do I want to keep looking and risk not getting any points or less points? But I have a good idea of where to start. It is somewhere that often sells colorful treats. So maybe it will have the answer. The blue is really what's throwing me because obviously salty and crunchy is a pretty common combination. How blue does it have to be? Uh, predominantly blue. Predominantly blue. Uh. Headed into the marketplace, Disney Springs is divided into four neighborhoods. You have the marketplace. This is where you're gonna find World of Disney, Ghirardelli, Marketplace Co-op, Rainforest Cafe. You've got the landing. That's where you're gonna find Jack Lindsay's hangar bar, wine bar George, the boathouse. Where we started was town center. That's where you're gonna find a lot of the shopping as well as guest relations, homecoming. And then all the way on the other side from where we are is the west side. That's where you're gonna have Cirque du Soleil, City Works, the movie theater, Splitsville. So, hmm. lots to offer, but does anywhere offer? a blue crunchy salty snack. We're headed to Goofy's Candy Company because one, I think there's gonna be something crunchy and blue, like rock candy or some kind of hard candy treat. There's also one thing that they used to offer that I'm hoping has returned, which could save the day. If Goofy's Candy Company doesn't work out, I might go to Swirls on the Water, the Dole Whip little spot over here because they had a blue Dole Whip at some point. I'm just hoping I can find something with at least two of the words at Goofy's Candy Company. Goofy's Candy Company is one of two kind of classic Disney sweet shops here at Disney Springs. The other is Candy Cauldron down on the west side. Here they're gonna have a bakery case with Rice Krispie treats and cupcakes and cookies. Uh, they're gonna have a variety of the bag treats, some bulk items. But my hope is that a certain item has returned. All right, so prior to the panini, you could do create your own treats, and it looks like it's back. But my dreams have been dashed. For you see, you used to be able to do a create your own pretzel, as illustrated by the little drawing that Goofy has right there. Now you can do an apple, a rice crisp retreat, a, a marshmallow, or a cake pop, but none of those things are salty and I was planning to get a pretzel with the, I was hoping they still had the like 50th celebration iridescent blue and purple sprinkles on it. And that would be all three things. Hmm. My dreams are dashed, but let's see what I could do. Okay, here's a Rice Krispie treat that's mostly blue and purple. So that would be crunchy and blue, but not salty. Here's a cookie that you could probably say is crunchy and blue, but not salty. I see a blue lollipop. That would be blue and crunchy. Salty's really gonna be the problem here. 
well, I had a really good idea and it was dashed. So I'm trying to decide now if I want to just grab one of the two point items or risk it and leave and look somewhere else. I'm gonna look around the store though first to see if anything prepackaged fits all three. Otherwise, I have to decide how risky I feel like playing. Now I may be colorblind, but I believe that the celebration platform is predominantly blue and it's also a kettle corn, so it's sweet and salty and crunchy. The question is, will Molly notice? Okay, well this is purple, but maybe they have weird blue popcorn. I've been inspired. Do we count it as majority blue? That kernel. That's true. Do we count this? I think so. But I think that that is a blue, crunchy, salty snack. Here it is. My blue, salty, crunchy snack. Mmm. Tastes like victory? Yes, it does. Well, that's a full three points. You know, the thing about this popcorn is, I would not tell you to buy this because there are so many more unique, fresh treats. That said, I like that they have so many varieties of the popcorn and it kind of tastes like cereal. Gotta say though, not the worst blue food I've eaten in Disney World recently. And I'll take the full three points. All right, my turn. So, uh, wonderful producer behind the camera. That's me. What are the, uh, what, are, what descriptors did I get? Here I am, spinning a wheel, definitely not hitting a randomizer on the phone. <laughs> um, vegan. Yeah. Healthy-ish. Okay, it's two for one. Smoky. Okay. All right, I think this is manageable. Okay, well, the vegan thing threw me off. Normally, that's not what I go for, but I think it'd be interesting to see and try to find something to grab that is vegan, mainly because if we do, then the, it's going to take care of the healthy-ish in the same vein. But smoky is really what is calling to me, which means we're going to take a walk back to the polite pig, and that'll be the first place that I stop to see if there's anything on the menu that speaks to me and covers all three of our bases, maybe even two bases. Um, and from there, we'll decide if I want to gamble. I'm thinking that if Polite Pig doesn't work out for me, then perhaps the next best place would be Deluxe Burger. And at least there I could get two out of the three options. Uh, I suppose I could make an argument for the healthy-ish, depending on the item. But really, at this point, I am at the whims of the randomizer and it has chosen to be cruel. A cruel mistress. At first glance on the menu, it looks like there are a number of vegetarian options as indicated by the little V on the side of the item, mostly within the market sides area. I'm gonna go check and see if anything is actually vegan or not. And if no, then I'm just gonna gamble and we're gonna go towards, um, we're gonna go to Deluxe Burger. With the help of our beloved cast members, I have figured something out. We are here at Polite Pig, which is a delightful barbecue and whiskey joint, and the owners are James Beard Award nominees, so everything here is incredibly high quality. While the Polite Pig is normally known for their smoked meats, and frankly, that's what I would normally be getting when I visit this location, this time I went with a side combination. What we've gotten here is the crispy Brussels salad, the roasted corn, and the watermelon salad. Now. The roasted corn would normally come with a chipotle aioli, however I worked with a cast member and we have removed that so it truly is vegan. It is also healthy because it's corn and it should be smoky because it has been grilled and roasted. Now I'm also excited to try the crispy Brussels sprouts and the watermelon salad and it is important to note that all three of these items normally would be vegetarian. But as it stands, the watermelon salad and the crispy Brussels sprouts are not truly vegan, they're just vegetarian. Cheers. You know, I was worried it wasn't going to be smoky, but it is. Tastes like three points. Producer coming in hot from behind the camera, also eating corn, 
It is definitely smoky. It also doesn't taste like anything because there's no butter or salt on it. Yeah, I do wish I had the Chipotle aioli. But for the sake of competition and integrity. And now we are going to enjoy the other sides. With yeah. Molly starting off strong with the Brussels sprouts. You know, when getting a market platter, you gotta review multiple things. And the cast members said we should get these, and who are we to say no? Oh wow. Is that whiskey caramel? Mm -hmm. These are actually my side of choice when I come to Flight Pig. I love Brussels sprouts. They're super crunchy, smoky. Love this little bit of sweetness from the whiskey caramel sauce. It does have butter in it, which is why she said these would not be considered plant-based. However, we could have removed that and altered that as well. But if I can eat just the blue kernels out of something, Alan can get what just one of the sides to be. Interestingly uh, enough, both of our first picks have been corn-based. Is that joke over? Might be. And I'm going to try the pickled watermelon salad with what looks like some peppers and tomatoes, onion and feta cheese. Yeah. I really like that. It's refreshing, slightly tangy, a little sweet. The feta cheese from the dressing adds a little bit of richness to the dish. They could have, of course, removed the feta cheese to make it vegan, but I'm glad they did. That is fantastic. All right, you're up next. Shopping category. So we now have to buy something that fits our three descriptors. Randomizer. Yep, certainly me over here spinning that same wheel. Uh, you have to get something based on these descriptions. One, soft. Two, green. Three, crunchy. Well, my first thought was Baby Yoda, but I guess that's gone if it has to be Princess. <laughs> uh, regardless, we're going to World of Disney. Soft, green, and Princess. Now, when I heard soft, I was thinking Home Good. When I heard green, I was thinking Star Wars. And then I heard Princess, and I knew we had to go to World of Disney. This is the largest character store in Walt Disney World. Here you can find all kinds of stuff. Classic Disney, parks inspired, Marvel, Star Wars, not as much Marvel and Star Wars as they are dedicated stores, but also Princess. I feel very confident I can find something soft and green. Again, Baby Yoda or like maybe a Kermit or something. I don't know that I can find a soft green princess. I could probably find like a, a Pascal, who's Rapunzel's pet, but Pascal's not a princess. So, starters, we have the D100 collection. None of this is green. The Celebration's color is purple, but it is really cute. Like, look how cute this lounge fly is with all the Disney characters. Tiana, Louis, Baloo, Big Owl. Now's not the time to get distracted, except for it is absolutely the time to get distracted because they have the new Hocus Pocus ears. I'm sorry. What's happening? They have the new Hocus Pocus ears. <laughs> I've been distracted. But but that's not soft green or princess themed. I'll be back. Dear viewer, I want you to know we made it all of a half of a step before Molly located a new ear that we got distracted by. To be fair, they're very adorable. All the Halloween stuff is out. It is spooky season. I don't think you understand how hard it is for me to not go in that section and look for the ears I want. Because there's a different pair of ears we haven't seen yet. Soon. Soon. I am going to start in plush. Because maybe there's a plush Princess Ariel who's seasick. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, see, this is exactly what I was thinking. Look how soft this is. Look how green it is. It's certainly not a princess though, but I could get it to get two points. Staying on task, kind of. All right, Princess Minnie, but she is very clearly pink. Um, do any princesses wear green outfits? Is there a Princess Tiana Nuimo? She wears green. Here's Mulan. I don't think that's enough green to count. 
And I can only buy one item, so it's not like I can buy her a green outfit. Nuimos are these cute little bendable characters straight out of Japan. They've got all kinds of characters from different princesses, as you can see, to classic characters, Stitch, Winnie the Pooh friends, and then you can get little outfits for them. And it's very trendy right now with the youths to like attach one to your backpack strap. It's very, very cute. Uh, but that is not what we're about right now. Okay, nothing plush works. I'm going to Home Goods. I've not even seen any green princess clothes. Like I could get that cool Bruno cloak, but Bruno is not a princess. Although I do like the cloak. Look at these cute Louisa costumes. Here's green, but it's Winnie the Pooh. Made it into the home goods section. There's not much in the way of like blankets or pillows, which is kind of what I was thinking. And I'm not even really seeing green mugs. The one I do see, there's this one, it's got mostly green, but it's Chippendale. There's this green Abuelo mug that has Mickey on it that I just don't think is for me. Why not? Anyway, um, green Goofy, green Mary Poppins, green Haunted Mansion, but regardless, none of these are soft anyway, so I don't even know why I'm trying that hard. Yeah. I think we have to go to another store. Okay, last Hail Mary before we leave. I'm in the Star Wars section to see if there's anything green with Princess Leia. I don't even see anything with Princess Leia. I see so much Baby Yoda. Why couldn't my thing have said Star Wars instead of Princess? It would seem that World of Disney was a bit of a bust. I could have gotten two things easily. I could have gotten soft and green um, or soft and princess but not all three. So I'm gonna go to Marketplace Co-op over here to see if I can get three, because I feel confident I can always find two. Okay, I'm gonna go to Marketplace Co-op is my current plan. And if that fails, I'm then deciding between Trendy, which is the attached store at Marketplace Co-op that's mostly clothes and kind of aimed at a like younger demographic. So they probably have something soft and princess at least, or just past this area is Once Upon a Toy, which is a toy store. So again, I feel confident I can get two points. Can I get all three? I would like to, because I didn't think Alan would get all three on the first one, and I thought I would be in a lead. All right, into Marketplace Co-op we go. This is a store that's actually like multiple stores in one, because they have little stalls, kind of like a marketplace, for different brands. So they have D-Tech On Demand, which is where you can make custom magic bands and phone cases and magnets. So I could definitely get two out of three there, but not soft. Here is the vault collection, which is uh, showcasing some of the old school Disney styles that they've come out with recently. There's also a home section, a Marvel section, and then like a trendy section and a pet section. So here we go. All right, they have some of the decades collection here. Every decade they're releasing plushes, ears, backpacks. The plush is the rescuers. Very cute for this. This is the 70s. They are not princesses. This is what I was thinking might have good luck. It's the centerpiece selection. So this is all home goods. I was kind of hoping we would see like a pillow or a blanket in here. Now we're in the Marvel section, which I obviously love and would enjoy spending lots of money in. But are there any princesses? So, yeah. I mean, I guess I could go for two points and get this Loki accessory set. Ooh, 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 ooh. A princess home goods section for World Princess Week, which is coming up later in August. <laughs> I cannot tell what color this tail is. Okay, I found more two-point things with like soft and aerial, but I can't tell that it's green, so that doesn't feel like that's good. There's more Baby Yoda stuff in here, but no three-pointers. I am gonna risk it and go to one more place and hope I can find another two-point item at least, and maybe a three-point item. I feel better about my chances in a toy store than I do about in Trendy. Bold move. Let's see how it works out for us. What would be great is if I could find something Buzz 
that was also soft because then at least I'm getting a buzz toy. Once Upon a Toy, as the name would suggest, is a toy store right here in the marketplace. I don't know if I'll find anything soft. There are some plushes, so maybe, but I, I think, I feel very good about green and, and princess. All right, well, at least I know I can get two points because I could buy this soft and green oogie boogie. It's what everyone wants. You know, I was really hoping that someone would have the Princess Tiana version of this doll because it's like a soft plush of a character. And I know they have Tiana, but I only see Mirabelle and Mulan and I didn't see her at World of Disney either. I just don't think Mulan's wearing enough green. Obviously, this beautiful designer Princess Tiana is wearing enough green, but if uh, I don't need to buy a $60 doll, that would be great, even though I think these dolls are so stunningly beautiful. Like, look at the Snow White version. Literally gorgeous. I could buy the classic Princess Tiana. Do they have Princess Tiana? They have Tinkerbell, but she's not a princess. Oh, here she is. I could buy classic Princess Tiana doll and give it to one of my nieces. That's an option. That would be two points. She's certainly not soft. Gonna do one more lap. Here we go. If I'm gonna buy something that's only two, at least it can be Toy Story. Then I'm gonna buy the little green alien from Toy Story and he can live in my office. Ooh. All right, what are my, what are my things? Sorry, Buzz was giving me a condolences hug because I only got two points. Although I'm excited, my alien's cute to sit on my desk. Um, okay, let me do the wheel. Okay. Um, we get sound effects now. Yeah, small. Okay. Villain. Small villain, okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Pixar. A small Pixar villain. Yes. Not small in stature, but small in item. Small in item, okay. I've got an idea. Mm -hmm. We gotta go back to World of Disney though. Okay, I changed my mind. Originally I was gonna go to World of Disney, but I then realized that we have right across from us the pin trading gazebo. And if I'm looking for something small, can't, uh, can't be much smaller than a pin. So we're gonna go check that out. A small Pixar villain item. All right, let's dive in. Now pins themselves, listen, I just wanna give a high five to whoever was in that meeting when they decided, hey, pin trading is gonna be the next big thing at Disney World because boy, did they knock it out of the park. Now, some people collect pins, some people trade them, and there are some cast member exclusive pins that you can only get by trading your pins with cast members. Regardless, it's a really neat collectible, and with the variety we have here, I'm hoping we find a Pixar villain pin. Although right now, I'm sort of drawn to this Emperor's New Groove reunion photo. We'll come back for that. So that would be two points. Huh. Now we've moved into some Pixar areas that are also small with Toy Story representation here, but I don't see a villain. What a guy wouldn't give for a Lotso Huggin' Bear pin right now. Then I'd be crushing it. <laughs> well, I guess you need to get that, huh? Well, this would be a great set if we were looking for villains, but nothing there that's Pixar. I think that pin's kind of dashing. All right, I was just about to gamble because there is a mystery set for Pixar's Coco. And there's a one in eight chance that it would be Ernesto, which is the villain. However, we have found Randall, the villain from Monsters Incorporated. This is small. This is Pixar because this is Pixar pins. And it is most definitely a villain. <sighs> really well, happy for your pin. Randall. Are you ready to move on to the drinks rounds, buddy? Yes, I'm ready to do the drink round. That's not how Randall sounds. Wow. But I tried. Wow. It's yeah. like he was here. You just can't see him because he can match everything. No, he's he's right there. All right. 
Round three, I'm going in one point behind, so I desperately want to get all three points so that I have as good of a shot as possible to win. All right, and we are going to roll on the random description generator. What a fancy roller. Spicy. Ooh, I like spicy. I'm not gonna do that again. Um, expensive. What's expensive? Fifteen dollars. Fifteen dollars or greater. Okay. And spirited. Oh, let's go. Let's go. I don't know about you, but when I hear spicy and drink, I think spicy margarita. Spirited only confirms that. And uh, expensive. We'll do whatever we got to do to make it. Uh, as expensive as possible. Not really, at least uh, what I would consider an expensive cocktail in a theme park world, which is really expensive compared to the real world. Now I could go to Dockside Margaritas, which is right here. However, they do not have as wide of a selection as where I'm headed. It's not my preferred margarita vendor here in Disney Springs. There's a great spot to get margaritas. They're very high-end margaritas and they have a huge mezcal and tequila selection. So my thought is, if they don't have one that's already expensive, I can upgrade the tequila, I can make it a double. I'll figure it out. <laughs> we are headed to Frontera Cocina confidently, friends, confidently. I feel very secure that they will have a spicy margarita. I've had it before, it's delicious. Frontera Cocina is one of several restaurants here at Disney Springs that is owned and operated by a James Beard award-winning chef. This is Chef Rick Bayless, who specializes in Mexican cuisine, specifically the Oaxacan region of Mexico. The food is fantastic, and the drinks are done by the same beverage team in the Mexico Pavilion in Epcot. So La Cava del Tequila, you know you're gonna get really good margaritas when you come here. They've also got amazing queso fundido. I ate it during the cheese video. Do I need to get some of that with my mark? This is definitely an upscale spot. The food is excellent, but if you're used to like Tex-Mex food, you're gonna see that the price reflects the fact that this is a James Beard Warning Week shift. It is a sit down, very luxurious meal. However, if you just wanna get a margarita, just wanna get an app, the bar is first come first serve, which is where we're headed. Here's a look at the cocktails at Frontera Cocina. So they have a variety of margaritas and the play with fire is the one i'm after here it's got the jalapeno cucumber juice in it but the reason i like it more here than at la cava del tequila even though i believe they're the same recipe this and the el diablo here you get to choose mezcal or tequila and i prefer mezcal whereas in la cava it's it's the tequila uh, they also have a couple of other cocktails they have an elote old-fashioned they have some mocktails a variety of beers Ooh, one beer is called hakuna matata a tropical IPA? Well, it looks like we're gonna have to come here for dinner soon because that sounds amazing. Or maybe do a Disney Springs bar crawl. Let us know if you'd wanna watch that. Um, but you can also just do mezcal and tequila flights or shots. And then just a quick peek at the food as well. Again, they've got that amazing queso fundido. They've got really good guacamole, a couple salads, tacos. Uh, and again, they're known for the Oaxacan food. So all of the mole sauces are fantastic. Here is my cocktail. It's beautiful. Now the bartender was awesome. I asked him if I could make it more expensive and he started laughing and asked why. So he explained what we were doing. And he said, I'll make you a slightly different version of this from scratch. I'll make it extra spicy and I'll put in better mezcal for you. So this definitely is gonna hit all three marks. It's gonna be expensive. It's definitely gonna be spicy and it is certainly spirited. So cheers. spicy. It's really good though. I did not expect it to be that spicy, but it is fantastic. You can definitely taste the smoky mezcal. I always call mezcal tequila smoky sister. I prefer it over tequila. And then you've got that actual spice. You've got that, te that jalapeno kind of punching you, but then it is leveled out with a little bit of sweetness and refreshment from the lime juice, the agave, and the cucumber. That is... Mm a sweet way to get three points. What? I couldn't let you drink alone. That'd be rude. Yeah. It'd be weird to sit at the bar. Come on. Guys. Grow up. Cheers. 
I got La Paloma, which is fever tree pink grapefruit soda, lime juice, some of the same mezcal that Molly got, and a tahini rim. It's very light and refreshing, and I love it. Exactly what I want on a day like today. The cocktails are great here. You can usually get a spot at the bar without any issue. I feel like this place is underrated for cocktails yes. in Disney Springs. Yes. If you want a good marg, you want a good uh, Mexican-inspired cocktail, this is a good place. Cheers. Now let's see what Alan gets. I'm still a point up, right? After upgrading the Mezcal and getting a double, it was a $33 margarita, so I definitely think I hit the expensive mark and earned those three points. Yeah, that sounds about right. It's delicious, though. So. <sighs> um, Last round's mine. Yes. Drinks. Yeah. All right, what does the random descriptor generator have in store for me? Ooh. Number one, red. Red. Okay. Number two. Frozen. Frozen. Frozen red, okay. Number three. Character inspired. Frozen red and character inspired. Uh huh. I don't really want to walk all the way across this <laughs> Disney Springs again, but I'm thinking we might. Where are we going? Movies Candy Company. I'm sorry. So when I first heard Frozen, I thought of something like Vivoli or Salt and Straw because they do milkshakes. But I wasn't sure if there would be a red one or if there would be one that was character inspired. And this has made all the more difficult because red is a character color and if it's character inspired, it cannot be an alcoholic beverage. You know, for example, you're not going to get Mickey's Margarita or Minnie's Margarita because they don't drink. It goes so far as to, you can't even get an alcoholic beverage in a character-themed souvenir cup. So because of that, any strawberry margarita or frankly, any frozen cocktail is off the table. Which makes me all the more thrilled that I just, uh, I just didn't want to let Molly drink alone. And what was old will now be new again and we uh, end at the beginning. Hiya, pal. Goofy's Glaciers are slushies and they are undeniably goofy. This one is fruit punch, but it does come in a variety of different flavors. Not normally what I'd pick for a beverage in Disney Springs, but for three points and the victory, I'll take it. Wow, that's sweet. Wow. Well, at least I liked my drink. I guess that's fair. The randomizer was not in my favor today with the green princess soft situation. Sigh. Let us know where you'd like us to try this next. Do you want a sip? Such trepidation. I like the lemon one because then it tastes like frozen lemonade. That's very sweet. Um. <laughs> yeah, let us know where you'd like us to try this concept next. This was fun. I really enjoyed it. The, the randomizer is just unforgiving and it really makes you have to think through where you're going to go. Yeah, I also think for next game we have to implement a no repeat location. Yeah, I'm down. Makes it a little harder. Mm -hmm. We didn't because of World of Disney and what a hot spot that is, but I think that would spice it up a little bit. Yeah, it didn't get good in the last 15 seconds. Nope, nope, been the same the whole time. Yeah. Um, I thought maybe somehow it had, but I do like the other flavors. Don't don't take this as disparaging all Goofy's releasers. Just the red ones. <sighs> well, friends, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you're new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation, join us on Discord. The links for all that are going to be down below. Like Alan said, let us know where else you'd like to see us play this game. If you have any suggestions for the game, let us know that as well. And in the meantime, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it's been as magical as it can be when you're losing. I'm going to go by those ears now. Oh, yeah, for sure. Spooky season has begun. I mean, you can keep trying it. It's just going to stay the same. That's paper straw. It's not working. <laughs>